Good day, everyone. Pleasure to be with you again. I was happy to have been able to be in shul yesterday for the first time on a Shabbat for a long, long time. And Baruch Hashem, everyone should stay well and careful, and we'll all get through this in good health and spirits. We're in uh, Perigimel in Pirkei Ovos, and we're at Mishneh Yudchet. This is still uh, Rabbi Akiva. Uh, the Mishnah says, Chaviv Adon Shenivra B'Tselem Elohim. The word Chaviv in Hebrew is usually translated as uh, beloved, uh, but it uh, has in it an element that means precious, something unique. And therefore, every human being in the world is chaviv, is unique, and is precious. And Kaviochel, the Rabboni Sholem, sees us that way. And Judaism sees people that way. And that's an inheritance that we have from our father Abraham and our mother Sora, who lived in a world of idolatry, in a world where uh, God was not known, so to speak. And yet, they treated people chaviv. And that's the whole basis of what we say, gemilas chasodim, to do a favor, to do something good for a person. For instance, if, uh, if I do something for my child, I don't, I don't feel that that's gemilas chasodim. If I do something for a stranger, oh, then I may think, you know, why well, should spend my money on a stranger? Or why should I spend my time or my effort or my concern? But if it's somebody that's very close to me, my child, so I don't feel I'm doing him a favor. I'm, you know, that's like part of me. I'm supposed to do that. I'm supposed to feel that way. So the height of Avraham Avinu was that he saw that in all of humanity. He saw Chovi Vodo. So when uh, three uh, Bedouin Arabs walk into his tent at the heat of the day, so he has to go and uh, slaughter cattle and prepare food and Sora has to bake. Because Shenivra B'Tselem Elohim. Because in every human being there is the spark of the Creator. That's what it means, B'Tselem. Now, B'Tselem is not, God forbid, the form, because God has no form. And to represent God in anthropomorphic terms is uh, not uh, acceptable in Judaism. You'll notice that Targum is, for instance, whenever it says in the Torah uh, words that could be interpreted as having form or substance, like Yad Hashem, God's hand, he never translates it that way. And the Rambam is his follower, because God has no hand. And this is all Saber Asaozen in order that we should have some concept of what godliness is, so we have to use human terms. But the human terms should not be understood in any way as reflecting godliness and God, so to speak. And that was a part of the objection always uh, that Judaism has had to forms and to icons and to paintings and because they uh, they they uh, 
confuse the creator with the created. So we're all uh, aware of the uh, famous uh, painting of Michelangelo with the finger that uh, emanates from heaven that touches man. So that's a physical representation. There is no finger. But the idea behind it, and really that's Michelangelo's genius, is that we are touched by God. And the Lord who created us has not abandoned us. He is with us all the time because all the time the Tzalem Elohim is with us. The Tzalem Elohim is the ability to speak, to communicate, the ability to imagine, the ability to think, the ability to recall, none of which has any physical explanation, so to speak. I mean, we can dissect the brain and say, this part takes care of this, and this part takes care of that, etc., etc. But we really don't understand how it works. Now, what is this mass of uh, tissue? Grant me memory, and the mass of tissue, let's say, of my arm does not grant me memory. How does it work? That's all part of Tzalem Elohim. And uh, because of that, Chovivodom, every human being is precious. Every human being has within himself or herself this divine spark. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, depends how you look at it, we're given the power of free will. We can do whatever we want with it. We can ignore it. We can subsume it. We can exploit it for evil. We can exploit it for good. We can attempt to reconnect it with the creator. All of that is up to us. We're the ones that make that decision. But in order to understand that, you know, or how precious life is, what a gift that is. And uh, unfortunately, uh, there are many, many uh, ideologies in the world where life is not precious. The ideal, the ideology is more precious than the life. The state, sacrifice everything from the state. for uh, purposes uh, that are not uh, that are not necessarily uh, valid that's when you take the wrong turn and that's the idea of peace that is always mentioned in Chazal and mentioned in Tanakh Hashem Yevorei Chazamu Bar Shalom God will bless us with peace. Because the opposite of peace is that human life is, uh, so to speak, secondary. The Tzalem Elohim is not that important. Can easily be uh, sacrificed. I've, uh, in the few months here that uh, I was uh, in a lot of isolation, first in America, <clears throat> and then the two weeks here. So uh, one of the things that I've been able to do is I've been listening to, uh, been able to listen to audible books. So I uh, heard a magisterial history of the American Civil War. Absolutely great. But it's unbelievable how many lives were sacrificed. 
You're talking about 650,000 people died. And uh, everybody thought that they were dying for a noble cause. And most of the Confederates died not because they were slave owners or even approved of slavery. They wanted states' rights. They wanted a smaller federal government. They called it the second revolution after the first American revolution. So the first revolution was against the tyranny of Great Britain, and this was against the tyranny of the majority in the United States. And then I heard a book on the First World War, which is even more horrendous. And for there, we don't even know what the purpose was. It's not clear till today. There have been, uh, I think, uh, over 30,000 books written about the origins and purpose of the First World War. But nobody has figured it out. And it's all because the concept of Chovi Vodom doesn't exist. Yeah, the will to dominate others automatically refutes the idea of Chovi Vodom. Because Chovi Vodom is that everybody is an individual, everybody is different, everybody is unique. And uh, if we believe that Chovi Vodom Shaliva B'Tselem Elohim, then I can let uh, others be different from me without being very, very nervous about it, without somehow having to react in a way that cancels the idea of Chavi And uh, we live in a time of uh, great political difference here in Israel and the United States and throughout the world. And this whole... Uh, inability, so to speak, to allow for this concept of Chovi Vodom to take hold uh, creates all of the tensions that exist. So we have a concept of freedom of assembly. I was told, I didn't even notice it, but I was told that there was a great demonstration uh, here on the, my street on Ben Maimon on Saturday night because uh, at the end of the street is uh, the Prime Minister's home. So everybody has a right to demonstrate, right? It's guaranteed to us. But what are we demonstrating about? What is it that troubles us? And in the concept of Chovi Vodom, I think we will be less troubled that we will be less likely to uh, demonstrate. We'd like be less likely to follow ideas and ideals rather than dealing with people. And from the demonization of people and entire groups of people, so then that, that destroys Chavi Vodom. They're not Chavi. And it's interesting, I think, to note that the Jewish people who have perhaps suffered more than any other group in the history of the world from the fact that others don't want to allow us to be different should somehow internally, within our own community, not understand that the way to tranquility of Drocheo Darche Noam Bechonasiv Oseo Shalom is through this concept of Chovi Vodom. So that's universal. That applies to everyone. Everyone, every human being in the world is Chovi. Then Rabbi Akiva says there's a next level. Chavivin Yisrael. 
The Jewish people are beloved, special, unique to the Creator. How do we know that? Shenikru bonim lamokum, that they are considered children of God. Shenemar boni matem la Hashem because it says in the Torah that you are children. Now, no matter how altruistic I am, I favor my children. All of us knows that uh, when the child complains about the teacher, most of the time we. Uh, take it out on the teacher and not on the child. Because one creates with us the feeling of eternity, of living beyond our lives, of generations that will yet come. And if they will come, so then I'm still here, so to speak, even if I'm not here. Before we went on this uh, Zoom, I was speaking to uh, Morty Terrigan. He told me he has a safer that his Zeta gave him. So then when he has the safer, he has his Zeta. His Zeta is still alive. Look at the safer. That's what bonim does for us. Bonim is a glimpse into the future, into a glimpse into eternity. And that's why we make the brocha on the Torah, it says, V'chaye olam nota b'sochemu. The Lord planted us, implanted us with chaye olam, eternal life not the 120 years that we're here. Not this veil of tears alone. But it's Chaye Olo. And that's a concept that a person has to have because that gives meaning to our life. And that allows us, even in difficult times, to be of good cheer and to think positively. So, boni matem la Hashem you have an extra measure of preciousness, of uniqueness. You're special. Now, that's part of the idea. I think uh, I always felt that in education and certainly in parenting. You have to make your, fi- your child feel special. You have to make your student feel special. You have to make people feel that they're special, that they're Jewish. They're unique. If you feel you're special, then you feel good about yourself. Now, you shouldn't be narcissistic. Everything in Torah is a balance. You can't go overboard. You know, the uh, Quaker said uh, to his friend, you know, it's me and thee, and I'm not certain about thee. You can't say that. But on the other hand, you have to feel special. And that was one of the things that the Jewish people always possessed. They always felt that we are special. And not only that, we felt that the world resented us to a great extent because they also knew that we were special. Of course, being special has requirements and it has discipline and it has... uh, obligations and responsibilities. It's not a free lunch. But that's the relationship, the relationship of Klal Yisrael 
with the Rabboni Shalom is that of parent and child. So we call B'nai Yisrael, the children of Israel. Because we have a father, Avinu Shabbat Shemayim. And that is uh, such a basic concept. Unfortunately, I, I, without uh, being critical, but uh, I have a sensation that that is not emphasized sufficiently in our educational systems. The child is not made to feel special. I always said, uh, reminded you of the fact that when I started in the yeshiva and I was 11 years old, so the Rebbe used to begin the Gomorrah class every morning. He said, first we have to recite. Ashreinu matov chalkeinu manoyim goraleinu. Ashreinu shanachnu mashkimimu marivim erev avoker. Omrim pamayim b'chol yom shema Yisrael Hashem alokeinu Hashem echod. That's the preamble. You have to say how fortunate we are that we can say Shema Yisrael, that we are bonim la Hashem alakech. He said, now we can learn Gemara. But if you learn Gemara without that feeling, and that's part of the problem, the scientific study of Gemara. You know, so that exists. It's existed for hundreds of years. So you'll know the name of every... Uh, Tana or Amora, and you'll know what color clothing he wore, and you, you'll know that, uh, what the socioeconomic consequences, you'll know all of that, but you won't under, but you don't get it. You won't understand what it's here. It's here to teach you that that it's a chiba yoseiro no das lachem. I'm showing you an extra measure of love that you can experience the fact that it's boni matem l'ashem And I told you that it would be there because it's written in the Torah. Shenemar boni matem l'ashem And then there's a third element here that maybe Akiva mentions. That also is a chibo yisera nodas le Yisrael. Another extra measure. So the first level is that we're all tzalem elokim. That's universal. The second measure is that we're children. Boni matem l'ashem elokech. But there are many times in life that the child doesn't appreciate the parent. Doesn't understand it. And uh, it's because of the different generations, different circumstances. But I think it's much more common than the other way around. And uh, the Rabboni Shalom wanted us to understand Kamiyochel, what the Father wants of us. So Chiba Yaseira Nodas Lahem, an extra measure of love, of devotion, of uniqueness, was given to the Jewish people. Shinitam Lahem Klichemda, because they were given a gift, a utensil that is so desirous that it can shape our lives. It's the magic bullet. It's the thing that focuses us. And how do I know that? Rabbi told us, I gave you a good 
is a good deal. You know, sometimes uh, in life, you have a friend or an expert or an advisor or your parent or somebody else that calls you up and he says, you know, I have a very, very good investment for you. And I think you should take advantage of it. And if the person takes advantage of it and the investment turns out to be truly profitable, so he's eternally grateful. It can always be a great thing. So the Rav Shalom told us that he's giving us a good investment. You should realize this is a good buy. It's a good purchase. It's worth a lot. And you're going to buy, you know, the old uh, cliche is to buy cheaply and to sell dearly. Well, I'm giving you a chance to get in at the bottom. The, uh, the first uh, partners or investors in Microsoft or in Apple or in Facebook or in all the other companies that exist today, they make trillions of dollars on a, on a very small investment. Because it was a lekach tov. If that's true in the physical world, how much more so is it true in the spiritual world, in the eternal world? So Chaviv in Yisrael, that they have the extra devotion of love, Shenitam Lahem Torah, because they were given as a gift the Torah. The Torah is everything. With the Torah, we're eternal. Without it, we're barely human. We see what a world looks like without Torah. And we have always emphasized we're us, it's Torah. Now, Torah is not a science, and it's not a subject, and it's not a university discipline. It's chayenu v'orech yomenu. It's our life and the length of our days. It's life itself. And therefore, it was a special gift from the Rabboni Shalom that he gave it to us and that he told us that he's giving it to us. Because sometimes a person uh, receives a gift anonymously, he doesn't realize it's a gift, and he doesn't appreciate it. But if you get a gift, let's say, from an important person, a person who's important in your life, again, uh, Morty Terrigan Zeta gave him a safer. The safe for itself is worth what? $3, $8, 20 shekel. But uh, there is no worth to the fact that Zayda gave it to him. And that he knows that that's where he got it. And therefore, that's the Chibo Yusera. That's the extra measure of greatness and love and uniqueness that's involved in it. And all of us have that experience. I, uh, there's a famous story of <laughs> the Chavetz Chaim that he once went to a Jew and he asked him for uh, a donation for the yeshiva. I think the yeshiva then was trying to build a brick building in Rodden because all the wooden buildings burn down every few years. And the man told him, uh, Rebbe, you know, right now I can't do anything for you, but I'm gonna leave you in the will. In my tzavoye, 
so that after I pass away, there will be uh, money dedicated to you. I'm going to leave you something. Now, the man had a uh, substantial library of Sforim, of, you know, worthy books. So when he passed away, the Chavz Chaim received a uh, notice from the executor that the man had left the Sforim to the yeshiva and he left his money to his children. <clears throat> and the Chavz Chaim said, remarked, I thought he was wiser than that. He should have left the books to his children and the money to the yeshiva. The question is, what is Chaye Olam? How are we remembered? What, what can constitute that? So that's the idea of Rabbi Akiva here in this mission of these three Chavivim that were B'Tselem Elohim and that were Boni Matem Hashem Elokeichem and that we were given the Torah, Ki Lekach Tov Nasati Lachem, Torah Si Alta Zovu. So I want to thank you all for listening, and everybody should stay well, and we'll see each other at good and happy occasions. Kol Tuv Sela. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Thank you everybody. Thank you, Rabbi. 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 Thank you, Rabbi.